What's up, everybody? Big Will, K-Pop for Life, coming back at ya. Welcome to another episode of K-Pop Rants. Yo, you feel the K-pop rants. That was fucking stupid. <laughs> K-pop rants. All of a sudden, my inner lame, nerdy white guy came out. Start clay aching and all over the room. I was invisible. And I could just watch you in your room. Enough of that. So today we're going to talk about second gen K-pop versus third gen K-pop. I'm leaving first gen out of it because I wasn't really a fan of it. I didn't get in till second gen had already taken over. And I've watched the first gen stuff. There's a lot of good first gen stuff, but it's really cheesy and it's not my particular style of music. So if you like that, cool. I don't. Um, just to be clear, third gen K-pop is what we're currently in. I love it, right? I love a lot of it, but there's a lot of crap. It's so, so oversaturated. There are so many groups that sound identical, vying for attention. And most of the time it turns into a beauty contest, right? Who has the sexiest member? What group can stand out the most with the way they look or has the biggest uh, bank account bankrolling them from, the, from whatever record label they're from? Uh, that's usually what happens. Uh, occasionally you get your... You're ones that, you know, explode because of a great song. Um, but it's less about the music now. And I think there's a large divide that's happened between second gen and third gen K-pop music. Now, real quick, I'm not an expert on music, right? I don't know anything about, you know, the intricacies of music or the... Um, I'm not classically trained in any instrument, right? Uh, I pretty much don't do anything but lift heavy stuff. And I speak two languages, English and bad English. So I'm only telling you from a perspective of somebody who's an avid K-pop fan for six years, who's watched the change occur slowly over time, and somebody who's not going to stop watching K-pop because I love K-pop. Like, I love Korean culture. I love what it represents. Um, and and um, I love music. I always have. Um, but second-gen K-pop was special. You know what I mean? And for the people that have just gotten into K-pop recently, you go back and watch second gen K-pop and some of it's probably good or you maybe you're a little more open-minded and you're like, I respect this. This is where it came from. But it sounds so different from the stuff that's out nowadays that you do exactly what I do with first gen K-pop. You're like, nah, I'm good. That's not that's not my bag, baby. That's so things not my bag, baby. Um, so I get that. And I'm not mad at you. That's, that's the way it always works, right? That's the way that it works. Um, but second gen K-pop for my, for my second geners out there, for people that have been in it a while, like me, um, it had that thing, you know what I mean? Like the thing that drew you into K-pop, it had something so unique and special. The, the outfits, the sound, the music, the, the culture was so infused into it. It was just so quirky, but it wasn't like and if you like Japanese stuff, that's cool. I like Japanese stuff too, but not the music. But it, it didn't have that weird Japanese quirk. Um, it had its a unique kind of thing. I can't explain it. You're watching this video if you agree with me and you're going, I can't explain it either, but I know exactly what you mean. You're probably commenting that right now. It was, it was special. You know what I mean? When you found it, you're like, what is this? Like... I don't know where you guys got into K-pop or what, what you found or what direction led you into K-pop, right? But with me, it all started with Size Gun Style simply because everybody in the freaking world, well, half the population of the planet has watched that video, right? And YouTube's algorithm saw me watch that a couple times. And it suggested Lee High, uh, It's Over. And if you haven't heard that song, you need to go check it out. If I remember, I'll put a link in the comments or in the description. But... Now I know why, because she's a YG artist. Um, but uh, I watched that song and I was like, what is this beautiful thing that I'm watching? Like I had a preconceived notion about what I was going to hear from the J-pop that I had heard and did not like. And then she had this rich 
soulful voice, but the song was catchy and it was poppy and it was like this R&B pop mix. It was just like, I love this. What is this? And then Big Paul came and we watched it and then we're like, all right, I need to see more. And the way I am is when I get obsessed, I get obsessed, right? I'm talking like a bad obsession with things. I've always been that way. And... I just, we found countdowns, right? We started finding countdowns because we didn't know who to look for. It's like, well, there's got to be countdowns. It was, it was amazing. Like so much of it was, you know, we just hated because it was so different, right? You're like, ugh, this sucks. This is weird. And now I go back and watch them and I'm like, I love almost all of this. Almost all of this is amazing, right? Uh, it gave you this certain feeling, this newness, this like, oh, this upswelling of like, this is something so unique and I love it. And the more I watched it, the more I got into it. And that second gen was just amazing, right? So much of it was so good. And there's still people I don't like from second gen. Like, I still don't like FX. But I respect Luna. I like Luna, right? Uh, still not a big Tiara fan. Uh, but I do like some of their songs. But stuff like that, right? Like, you still have things you don't like. But the overall feeling was just like, yes. Like, there was this euphoric feeling surrounding it. And, and now third gen's out. And because of its popularity and the rise of K-pop across the world, um, it has become very, it, it's, it's grown naturally. It's changed and, and evolved as music does. And I understand that. I don't, I don't expect music to stay the same all the time. It can't. It's, it, that's not how music works. It has to grow. But that doesn't mean I have to enjoy it or like it, right? Uh, if that was the case, everything would still be, you know, everybody playing on an organ, dancing in clogs and doing hymns, right? I know music has to change. Um, and I really like a ton of the third gen stuff, but it's so oversaturated now. And everything has been westernized to almost too much, in my opinion. They're still, it's still good. Right, it still maintains that Korean esque thing, like the groups and the excellent dancing, the the amazing choreography, uh, the some of the quirkiness is still there. Right, it's not nowhere the same. It's much more. I almost want to say toned down, so that it does appeal to the more to the international audience. And I get it. It's a money making industry, and you the bigger group that you can appeal to, the more money you're gonna make, and that is why they do it. I'm just saying. K-pop kind of has lost that that uniqueness that it has. And I know that almost most music across the world nowadays is influenced by Western music, right? And I know that K-pop is influenced by Western music because I know there's already somebody in the comments going, You don't understand. All music is Westernly inspired. Most of the producers, they work. I know that. Relax. This is just a rant video. You take it way too seriously. This is just my opinions, okay? I know that. I understand that all of that occurs. I understand that there are that the K-pop industry are going out and getting producers from the West and they're they're sampling music from from producers from the West and, and everywhere else too, but from the West, and they're getting that Western sound, you know, that you know, we say that. You know, you think Korea isn't a homogenized culture? Western music is probably as homogenized as you can get. It sounds identical. And, you know, if you ever watched any videos on that kind of stuff, I think it's like 80 to 90 percent of the pop music in the West comes from two guys, like some guy in Finland or Sweden and some guy in America. Right. They write or produce that big chunk of all Western music. I don't know if those two are the ones that are making the music uh, or some of the music now for K-pop. I wouldn't doubt it. Um, but it's very homogenized. It all sounds the same. And I personally don't want K-pop to go that route. It needs to maintain its identity in my mind. So the third gen stuff doesn't hold the same appeal to me. And I can see a lot of old school K-pop fans from like first gen just blowing it off entirely because it's way too different from first gen. Like if you were a first gen follower... You're not, yeah, you have no interest in the third gen stuff. And if you're a second gen person, you're still on board, most likely, but you've probably fallen away from like the stream interest you had. You know, that that fanatical passion is probably gone. Um, you know, and that level of fanaticism I had, it's still there, but I think a lot of it is there because I have this channel and because I get to interact with you guys and express my views in a public forum and then, you know, go back and forth. 
but I still love K-pop. Like I, I know what's gonna happen. Here's what here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna end the video after this because I've already gone too long with this rant. Um, what's gonna happen probably is that inevitably, just like the British wave or British invasion or whatever back in the '60s, and um, you know the punk vi invasion, all these these invasions, right? What's gonna happen is it's gonna peak, right? It's getting close to it now with BTS is their international population, or it's gonna keep going. It might go a little bit more, but eventually. It will it will tater it'll teeter off right it's gonna tater it's gonna tater totter off it's gonna teeter off right it's gonna come back down and it will decline and then it will level off it'll plateau and I think when it does that when they realize that the international audience in as, as a broad whole has sort of lost that interest that they had because they know that this this ship's not gonna sail forever they will start to come back and appeal to the Korean audience more right. I could be wrong. I don't know that much about what particularly is going on in Korean culture or how things are shifting and how much of this is directed at them versus the West. But I think that that level of quirkiness, that second gen feel will come back when they're not so focused on appealing to international fans and walking that tightrope of keeping the home fans happy in Korea and trying to appeal and broaden their reach to make more money in, 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 the, in the rest of the world. That's just my opinion, right? So I'm curious about your guys' thoughts on this. Uh, are you a second gen fan? Are you a third gen fan? Are you a first gen fan? Or do you just find this video and go, who the hell is this fat ugly guy and why do I care? And then you stayed because I'm so damn charismatic and lovable. Either way, drop a comment, let me know, hit the subscribe button, and as always, keep on popping K-poppers. Remember, it's not a trend. It's a lifestyle. Deuces. Yeah.